Hello everyone. Welcome to General Sciences Biology Module 45. This is going to be the last tutorial in the biology series. Today's lesson is on the science of genetics. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Genetics is a branch of science that deals with mechanism of inheritance. Now, a gene is a portion of a DNA molecule that codifies a specific protein. A gene is made up of several triplets of DNA nucleotides with their respective nitrogen-containing bases, such as AAG or CGT. A chromosome is a DNA molecule that may contain several different genes, as well as a portion of the DNA uh, that are not genes. A gene locus, or where locus means place, is the location of a gene in a chromosome or rather the position of the gene in a DNA molecule. And now we come to alleles and genes. So uh, most of the genes exist in more than one form, form and when expressed, they result in different characteristics. These different forms of genes are termed alleles. Uh, this implies that an allele is one of the at least two alternative forms of genes. Now, alleles are similar in type, but their genetic instructions produce visible, dif uh, visible difference in organisms. This dif visible difference is called a phenotype. Uh, for example, a single gene may be a controller of flower color in a plant. Its uh, two alleles may be such that one produces red flowers while other produces white flower. So as you can see in the diagram on your right hand side, alleles are located at the corresponding locations on the chromosomes which constitute a chromosomal pair. All diploid organisms such whether it's animals or plants have two alleles at a given location on a pair of chromosomes. On the other hand, the gametes, uh, for example sperm or eggs, contains only one allele of a particular gene. Now, after fertilization, when the uh, diploid conditions uh, condition is restored, one allele of the two main dominant or recessive resulting in the phenotype. Uh, so, till let's take humans for an example. They have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, right, so human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, each pair has two homologous chromosomes, that is one from the father and one from the mother. Now, they contain information related to production of uh, same uh, proteins except for sex chromosomes which are heterologous. Now, whether someone looks more like their father or their mother depends on these and is an example of phenotype. So, one allele usually comes from the father, another from the mother, but that's not mandatory. Uh, in clones, both of both of the alleles would come from a single organism or single parent. There may be three or more copies of chromosomes rather than the expected two copies in some cases. This is known as polysomy. Now, what is a phenotype? It is an observable characteristic, while a genotype is a nucleotide sequence contained in the chromosome. So, a phenotype is a biological manifestation of a genotype. If a gene of a diploid species has two different alleles, such as A and B, then there may be three possible genotypes, that is AA, AB, and BB. So, these genotypes manifest in three different kinds of phenotypes. So, AB... Sorry, AA and BB are called homozygous, while AB is called heterozygous. So, alleles may be dominant and recessive. In, if in this example, say if uh, allele A is dominant over allele B, the phenotype A will manifest whether it's AA or AB. A will, uh, so B will manifest only if the genotype is BB. So, a recessive allele can remain hidden because it, it may be present in the genotype, but it is not expressed in the phenotype. When this allele gets transmitted to the offspring and forms a homozygous genotype with another recessive allele from another chromosomal lineage, the phenotypical characteristics appear. Next, we have Mendel's law. So, Gregor Mendel was uh, also known as the father of modern genetics. Uh, is a uh, Aust uh, was an Austrian friar and uh, so he was recognized only 16 years after his death. He uh, lived from 1822 to 1884. He carried out studies on hereditary on pea plants and postulated the Mendel's law. So uh, 
Bendel used pea plants in his experiments for two main reasons. First, the pea plants reproduce sexually and second, they are self-pollinating. That is, the male and the female organs are enclosed within the same flower. So, uh, this ensure true breeding of plants. Now, Mendel used self-fertilization in peas over several generations for the purpose of obtaining individuals with the desired characteristics and to ensure that the parent pea plants were pure of homozygous. One such pure lineage was obtained when he crossbred them and obtained their hybrid offspring. He again crossbred the hybrids and called them F1 or first filial generation. When again the offsprings crossed, he called them F2 or second filial generation. So the result can be obtained in Mendel's law. So the first law is also known as law of segregation or law of purity of gametes. It says that a trait of an individual is always determined by two factors, one inherited from the father and the other from the mother. When gametes are produced, these two factors separate and a gamete only receives one or the other. Now, second law is called law of independent assortment. This law states that alleles of different genes separate independently of one another when gametes are formed. So Mendel thought that different traits are inherited independently of one another, uh, but we now know this is only true if the genes are not of, on the same chromosome, in which case they are not linked to each other. Ironically, Mendel was ahead of his times in his research. Um, his work was only later identified and understood properly when study of cells developed and scientists knew the, about the nucleus chromosomes, genes, mitosis, meiosis, etc. So what Mendel called as factors was later identified as genes. It was later understood that the phenotype is determined by the genotype and dominant alleles. However, it was also observed later that there are many types of inheritance that don't exactly follow the Mendelian pattern. These included polysomy, which is multiple alleles, gene interactions, gene linkages, etc. Now let's look at some other concepts. So incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is when heterozygous individual uh, presents an intermediate phenotype between the two types of homozygous ones. An example is incomplete dominance in sickle cell anemia, uh, where the heterozygous individual produces some sick red blood cells and some normal red blood cells. Another is co-dominance, uh, where heterozygous individual has a phenotype totally different from the homozygous ones and not an intermediate form. Uh, okay, uh, the next is uh, leotropy. Leotropy is when single gene manifests in several different phenotypical traits. We also have lethal genes uh, with at least one allele that when present in the genotype of an individual can cause death. These are uh, recessive lethal, uh, there are recessive lethal alleles and dominant lethal alleles. Uh, there are also multiple alleles. Multiple alleles is when same gene has more than two different alleles. Uh, that is, in normal Mendelian inheritance, the gene only had two alleles. In multiple alleles, relative dominance among the alleles may exist. Common example would be alleles in ABO blood group, in which there are three alleles, A, B or O, or IE, IB and I. IE is dominant over small i, which is recessive in relation to other IB alleles. I and IB lack dominance between themselves. There are also complementary genes uh, where a phenotypic trait is manifested by two or more genes. That's all for this tutorial. If you like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel GK Today. Until the next tutorial, goodbye.